confusion is a blended, indistinct combination opposed to distinctness. Another aspect of confusion is the elimination of all distinctions. This is in direct opposition to what God commanded over and over to his people. He told them to make a clear distinction between good and evil, lies and truth, holy and unholy, clean and unclean. Distinctions, categories, boundaries, separation, dividing of good from bad is in contrast to the confusion, chaos, and disorder the devil seeks to create. Okay? So we really got to see this is a huge aspect of this that is going on today. Uh, the devil seeks to eliminate all distinctions. The devil and his, you know, uh, his kingdom, the agents of chaos, that try to make it so you don't make a distinction between good and evil, lies and truth, holy and unholy. That they're the line, all the lines are blended, all the walls are broken down, all categories are destroyed. Uh, let's look at where the Bible commands to make a distinction over and over again. Leviticus 10:10 10, 10 says, and that you may put difference between a holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. Let's look at another one, Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the clean, the unclean and the clean. How about, and teach my people the difference between men and women, girls and boys, and uterus and baby. How about that too? Because all those distinctions are being eliminated. And here's a great passage from the New Testament about making that distinction and that separation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For, now watch the contrast over and over again. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? There's a distinction. You're supposed to, if, if you're not supposed to have fellowship with unrighteousness, right? You're supposed to be righteous and you're not supposed to have fellowship with unrighteousness. That means you're supposed to be able to make a distinction between what is righteous and what is unrighteous. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? None. And what communion hath light with darkness? None. You know, Ephesians 5, 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What communion of light with darkness? None. But you have to be able to discern between light and dark. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? None. What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? None. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? None. No agreement. No concord with Belial. No part with an infidel. No agreement with the temple of idols. No communion with darkness. And no fellowship with unrighteousness. Because you make a distinction, you identify it, you distinguish it, you separate it from it, and it says to reprove it. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, saying, that's wicked. I have nothing to do with that. Because it's bad. It's darkness. That's, this is a clear teaching. Over and over and over again throughout the Bible. Is you make the distinction and you separate from it. And you call it out. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. Saith the Lord Almighty. Okay? So it says you don't have fellowship with the, you got to identify the darkness, the unrighteousness, all that stuff. You identify it. You don't have fellowship with it. And then it says come out from among them and be separate. And you separate from it. You don't touch it. Say that's, I stay away from that. Because there's a wall there. There's a boundary. There's a line that you don't cross. 
There's a distinction that has to be made. The agents of chaos invert this. They say, don't come out from among them. Don't be separate. Touch the unclean thing. It's no big deal. This is in churches, by the way. And especially in the seminaries and Bible colleges that train the pastors that are sent out to pastor the churches. Now, if I were the devil, I wouldn't be trying to infiltrate every single church out there. Well, I'd just infiltrate the uh, Bible colleges and seminaries and then train all the pastors, uh, taint the curriculum that they're, they're trained with, taint that and the teachers there, train all those guys and send them out. You, you get them at the, at the source of the fountain, right? And then they go, go around spreading their garbage. And part of that garbage is this ecumenical philosophy of don't come out from among them, don't be separate. Away, it's away from separations and distinctions. That doctrine doesn't matter. The truth doesn't matter. Oh, it's all about love. Sin and, and false doctrine and heresy, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is love. That's it. We don't need to separate. There's no lines. There's no distinctions. None of that matters. And they use a false cover of love. They use a false cover of love to accomplish this. They pervert the meaning of love to get you to try to break down all distinctions. The Bible says true love does not rejoice in sin and lies, but rejoices in righteousness and truth. Let's look at it. In the most in, you know, uh, well-known passage in the Bible, all about love, about charity, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it goes through describing all the different aspects of charity, which is true biblical love. Usually in charity, the word charity is actually usually specifically used uh, referring to a love of neighbor towards neighbor, human towards human. And it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13, verse 4, well, I just put four because of the word charity, but it's basically verse six. It says, charity rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Okay, so let's think about that. True love, biblical love. You say you're a Christian, right? Anyone who says, I'm a Christian, or how people love to put in their social media profiles, I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus. Okay, if you follow Jesus, follow him right to the Bible, where his words are, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He said, search the scriptures, for they are they which testify of me. Okay? So Jesus was consistently pointing people to the scriptures. He talked about how the traditions, you have made the word of God of none effect through your traditions. So Jesus Christ made the word of God the highest authority all the time. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name, right? Well, in the word of God, it says that true biblical love rejoiceth not in iniquity. Now, iniquity, iniquity, what's that? That's sin. So it does not rejoice in sin. What's the inverse of that? It rejoices in righteousness. Okay? So true love does not say, yeah, sin is okay. Sin is no big deal. I'm going to be, I'm going to tolerate sin. No, it's not what it says. And then it says, but rejoiceth in the truth. Okay, so true love also rejoices in the truth. What's the inverse of that? Does not rejoice in lies, false doctrine, heresy. Doesn't. And so if someone tries to pervert love, they and they, they love to say love. It's all about love, love, love. The gospel of the Antichrist is the love gospel. Oh, they're going to talk about love. But it's evil. It's an evil perversion of love that does rejoice in sin and doesn't care about false doctrine. Because it, want it wants to knock down all those walls. Because then what happens? Disorder, chaos, confusion. To strengthen this even more, the Bible says that those that love God 
hate evil. Oh, that's right. Psalm 97 verse 10 says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. So all the people out there that say they're all about love. I love God. I love Jesus. Well, you say you love God. Do you hate evil also? Ye that love the Lord hate evil. And, and that's why you could say, yes, I hate evil. I hate genocide. Right? I don't glor I don't say I love genocidal dictators. That'd be a false love. Fake, phony. You're pretending that, oh, I'm just doing a biblical love. No, you're not. You're a liar. You are you are trying to get people to accept evil. Bible says you that love the Lord hate evil. Evil is to be hated. Now human beings commit evil. We are supposed to not hate people. We're supposed to pray for them that they would be saved, be born again, and turn from enemies of God to friends of God. Absolutely. But we are not to speak good words about people that have done very evil things. You don't bring up a serial killer and say, oh yeah, I love, the, I love Jeffrey Dahmer. Right? I love the son of Sam. I love I love Charles Manson. You say all that stuff. That's fake. You're being a fake. You're being a phony. You're you're subverting and perverting love. So people accept it. Because behind what you're doing is a satanic spirit. Antichrist. Really. The Antichrist spirit seeks to break down all walls, all distinctions, the boundaries, confusion and chaos. Did you know the Bible specifically warns against this false love which evil people hide behind? Yes, it does. Let's look at it. Romans chapter 12 verse 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Okay, so... Let love be without dissimulation. Now, don't you think it's important that you understand what the word dissimulation means? Because if the Bible says, let love be without dissimulation, it sounds like love could be perverted by this dissimulation. So let's look at what it is. What is dissimulation? Here's the definition. Dissimulation, the act of dissembling, a hiding under a false appearance, a feigning, false pretension, hypocrisy. Dissimulation may be simply concealment of the opinions, sentiments, or purpose, but it includes also the assuming of a false or counterfeit appearance which conceals the real opinions or purpose. Isn't that amazing how clear it is? The Bible is specifically warning about this fake antichrist love. And it just does it in one sentence by saying, let love be without dissimulation. Now, this is very important because it says false love hides under a counterfeit appearance to conceal their real opinions or purpose. But also, the Bible shows us one clear way to distinguish fake from true love. We'll get to that in a second. Okay? But first it says, false love hides under a counterfeit appearance to conceal their real opinions or purpose. Okay? So there are people out there that say they are Christians. They say they follow Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And they say it's all about love. But it's a fake love. And the reason they're using, they're talking about this love all the time is they're using it as a cover, a counterfeit appearance to conceal their real purpose and opinions. And so just because someone says Jesus and someone says love doesn't mean you automatically say they're good. And I trust them. I like them. I fellowship with them. They're my brother. No, they're not. 
No, absolutely not. But they will do that to get you to trust them. Because they have, they are concealing their real opinions and purpose. They have another purpose. But let's look at how this the Bible shows within the same verse. The Bible shows us one clear way to distinguish fake from true love. It is no accident. This statement occurs right after it says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Okay, this occurs in the same verse. It's all in one verse. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. It's saying this all goes together. True love makes distinctions between evil and good. True love separates from evil and cleaves to that which is good, right? So if love is without dissimulation, it will abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. True love will abhor that which is evil. And it will cleave to that which is good. It will hate evil, separate from evil. And separate unto which is good. False love makes no distinction between evil and good and does not separate from evil and cleave to the good. All right, so false love makes no distinction between evil and good, does not separate from it. False love is a weapon of the author of confusion, the god of chaos and his followers. They use it to break down all barriers and bring about disorder. Okay? That's how false love ties into this topic of confusion, chaos, and disorder. It is a very, very powerful weapon. It's as if people hear the word love and they lose their mind. All discernment goes out the window. Oh, they said they love, then they love! And they just believe it. It's all about love. Oh, isn't that nice? It's so beautiful. They're talking about love. That's funny because when I hear it, it makes me sick to my stomach because I know that it's fake. True biblical love is great. It's a beautiful thing. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it describes all the characteristic characteristics of true biblical love. Okay? And that is something that we should all have. We should all pray for and strive for. To have that love. And that should be our motivation. But a false love. We must be very, very careful for. And see that evil people. Very, very evil people. Will use the cover. The mask. The disguise of love. To do the most heinous things and cause chaos, disorder, and confusion. Knock down the barriers, walls, distinctions, and boundaries. They're using it as a sledgehammer to smash it all down. And so many people are following. They're, they're falling for it. Just because they say it's all about love. It's funny because, you know, Aleister Crowley talked about love too. People always quote when he says, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Well, that's not the whole saying. Love is the law. Love under will, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So he talked about love. And so did the Beatles, right? They said, love is all you need. Love is all you need. But then you go on the cover of their album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts. And Aleister Crowley is on the cover. One more interesting thing. They say love is love, love is love. Who says that? People who don't know what love is. And those same group of people, after the uh, their particular activities were legalized back in 2015, I think, whenever that was, there was an event. And they had a flyer for the event. And after it was made legal, on the flyer at the top said, love is the law. That's right. 
That was the phrase that they used to describe the event. And they were saying, you know, hey, our particular proclivities for each other is now the law of the land. But they just so happen to use the same phrase that Aleister Crowley used, love is the law. Because it's an antichrist, love. It breaks down all distinctions. And it justifies sin.